So post the formation of an elected government, if 10 people go to the governor, what is his discretion in the matter? Because the governor has to ascertain one that look, these people along with others, the leadership that I will administer the oath to will have the confidence of the house. That's one malas, one criteria on the basis of which he will swear in it. Two malas, he will, he will ask the question, which party do you belong to? These naturally have to ask. I'm sure he will know that before even he asks that question. So he knows, mothers, that the Shiv Sena is not before him. On the 30th, he knows Shiv Sena is not before him. So what is his discretion in administering the oath of office to Eknath Shinde? Except the fact that all the 39 rebels will support all the BJP along with the 39 rebels will oust the government and will support the new chief minister. He also knows, mothers, there is a disqualification petition pending. So your lordships will have to decide for the first time in situations of this nature when there is an already an elected government in place and there is a taint, alleged taint of a certain set of members pursuant to the fact that disqualification proceedings are pending, whether the governor can exercise discretion in a manner which will topple an elected government, not await the outcome of the disqualification proceedings. The governor could have done two things. Could have said, I know for a fact that there is a disqualification notice against you all, or against 16 of you. You who claim want me to administer an oath in office too want to be the chief minister. The court has given you time to the 12th of July. Please first file your reply on the 12th of July. See the outcome of those proceedings. And if there is no taint as far as your membership is concerned, I will administer the oath of office to you. That, I think, is a constitutionally moral path that the government ought to, that the governor ought to have adopted. Because institutional morality demands that he follows that path. The constitution, in fact, persuades him to follow that path. Why? Because there is an elected government in place, of which he was a member. He himself, Eknath Shinde, was a member. So why would a governor mother's administer oath accept that he himself knows that the government, elected government will be toppled. That's a very serious matter according to me, Maharaj. You looked at the Sarkaria Commission report, Maharaj, your options will find no such, no such eventuality, Maharaj, consider it. So, Maharaj, here there is a big conundrum, very big conundrum. So, first, Maharaj, the 27th order, the 29th order, then the governor. Even the governor could have stopped it. Only he even chose not to stop it. So your lordships will have to evolve some principle in the context of because this, if 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 Nabar Malaj is not overruled, this will happen time and again. And the governor will play. I'm sorry to say, Malaj, I have seen the governor. We did. It happened in Arunachal, and we have seen Malaj. And I mean, no no disrespect to the institution of the governor. We have seen governors performing a more proactive role as institutional heads within the state, which has created disturbances within the polity. So, the, the, therefore, how your logic will evolve a principle to ensure that constitutional morality is upheld is something that you're, I leave it to your logic. I cannot give an answer. I can only say in the facts and circumstances of this case, the governor should not have administered the oath of office to Eknath Sinde because he was not the leader of the Shiv Sena. It was a pending disqualification petition against him. He did not, he belonged to the Shiv Sena, but had dissociated himself with the Shiv Sena. And he had no locus. Who was to go to the, supposing whether the Shiv Sena was to form a government with the BJP, who was to go to the, to the governor? The leader of the 
Susanna. Yes. The Baxter book. Uh, Udav Thakre. It is he who would represent the Shiv Sena before the governor and say, okay, we want to join hands with the BJP. In what capacity was Eknath Shinde before the governor? In which capacity? And in which capacity did the governor accept or give him audience and then minister the oath of office? And let us kindly see, Shinde has never disputed that because he is the, he is the, in the Shiv Sena, he says, I am the Shiv Sena, and he has never disputed that Udav Thakre is the Paks Pramuk. He is not disputed even today. So, in what capacity did he go to the government? Where did he get his authority from? Not from Udav Thakre, not from the Paks Pramuk. Yes. In fact, whereas what the governor does in this process, it revives the concept of a split and allows it to be alive before him even though para 3 has been deleted from the give it gives it legitimacy now all this is 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 is, is, is violation of 21a all this per se mother what is the speaker to decide from the 21st of june right up to 30th of june when he's sworn in each act amounts to voluntarily giving up membership of the party, each act. And under the 10th schedule, he has no defense because there is no amalgamation. Well, let's, when you proclaim that you continue to be a member of the Shiv Sena, you also proclaim that you are working under the constitution of the Shiv Sena. As naturally, well, let's, you must assume that. And the constitution of the Shiv Sena allows you to voice your opinions in the form of a dissent or otherwise and to get support from primary members of the party or from the Pratinidhi Sabha as well as the Karikarvi so that you can actually articulate your concerns and so it is in this context Malats this order was passed by the election commission by the election commission and this judgment Malats I want your my Lord's attention to what parallel what have you given? Mother's had a couple of questions for me. Uh, there are just two things. Uh, <coughs> much of uh, the submissions, I don't know whether they'll join issue with you. Yes. Uh, straightforward from the interpretation of the constitution and the provision. Two aspects. One relating to the leadership issue, which is staring in the face of the speaker at least. That is one aspect of the matter. How does one deal with it? Uh, that is how, that's what is staring in the face of the speaker. Yes. Leadership issue. Yes. Particularly in the context of the legislators. Correct. Now, uh, another aspect I want your exposition on that is that legislators double up as the political leaders in every district. Yes. They are the same legislator. Yes, yes. Here he is a legislator. In a district, he is a leader. Yes. And normally we all know that the, in the district, the legislators are the top leaders. Correct. Invariably. Correct. An MLA in a district is not. Correct. So therefore, he wears the hat of a political leader and he comes into the legislative assembly and he is a legislator there. Yes. So therefore, he in a way represents the political perspective also. Sure while he is performing the function of a legislator. Sure, sure. So therefore the question arises as to how, whether there is there's some kind of an overlap <coughs> with respect to the position of a legislator as a person representing the political uh, part of the political party. Yes. At what stage and what is the test to determine it? Sadiq Ali is in a different context. But uh, of course, substantially, what you are, what you have told us that batting order or uh, for the speaker is first to determine the 10th schedule issue. But in the context of these two factors, I just wanted your. Well, what happens is I tell your lordships, um, I represent a particular assembly constituency in a state. 
the nature of that constituency may be entirely different from the nature of another constituency 100 miles away. The nature of issues may be entirely different, Malaz. As your Lordship knows, Malaz, the spread of the other backward classes and constituencies are different in different states, different in one state also. The nature of the population, the SCST may be more, SC may be less, backward may be more. Malaz are highly complex issues. But when you come to the legislature, you are not looking at your constituency. You are looking at the issues of the state. And the politics of the state in the context of including the nature of the problems that you may face in your constituency. So, Malaz, in fact, the interests of the legislature, when it comes to the interests of the state, are subjugated, uh, uh, the interest of his district or his particular parliamentary constituency is subjugated to the larger interests of the state. That's why it's the whip who decides what should be done, what should not be done. But you are right, there is an element of interplay, Malaz. But he can't, on the context of that element in his own interest, qua his constituency, say that I will not obey the whip of the party. That's the nature of the animal, Malaz. And, and therefore, Malaz, he has to, he has to do that. As far as the speaker is concerned, Malaz, the speaker has no choice in the matter. Speaker has only conveyed what the party conveys to him. Speaker has no individual right to say you are the whip or you are, uh, I now proclaim you to be the whip. That and here there is no overt act in the nature of uh, the legislator calling the members of the party to have a prior meeting and thereafter the legislators themselves. Even that can be done. Well, as according to you, even that can be done. Supposing all of them said and the party whip said otherwise. You are saying that the legislators can sit together and take a decision. Yes, Malaz, because they will have to obey the party. No, no, no. Can the legislators sit together and say that now we are the party? No, they can't. They can't. They can't. But then there's only merger, Malaz. That's the only difference is paragraph 4, Malaz. That can't be. Well, this is the conundrum, Malaz. This is a conundrum which was... But the same legislators don't sit in the parliament but uh, go out and call for a meeting. Or the political party, yes. As a political party. Only political, yes, they can. As a political, as if it's under the banner of a political That they can't do, Malaz. That they can't do. But then if they are the majority? No, no, no. They are majority in the legislature, Malaz. If they are the majority in the legislature, there's no doubt about that. But they can't call a meeting of the political party because they are bound by the constitution. You'll have to slightly also explain to us uh, how in Saadi Kali they got over this problem. Just kidding. Well, Saadi Kali, I tell you, watch it straight away. Saadi Kali, it's Congress J and Congress O. Well, let's take, for example, three people out of five belonging to the Congress party. They are a majority. They go to the governor of Goa and say, I am the political party. We are the majority. Topple this government. Numbers are stacked against. Government will be toppled. They will never go to the election commission. Why? Because there is the Congress party outside. What will the governor do? Governor, you think, well, on their logic, government will, governor will have to call a trust vote because the best way, Bomai says, the best way is to find out from a trust vote. Well, as all judgments of law are contextual unless there's an underlying basic principle like basic structure. This is a mockery, Malaj, that's happening in our country. And I said, Malaj, and that's, I repeat it, it's not about, it's not about Maharashtra. It's about Meghalaya. It's about Manipur. It is about tomorrow Uttar Pradesh. It is about... Anything can happen anywhere if you allow this to happen.